Hi, it's Jamie, Progressive's Employee of the Month, two months in a row. Leave a message at the... Hi, Jamie. It's me, Jamie. I just had a new idea for our song about the Name Your Price tool. So when it's like, tell us what you want to pay, hey, 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 and the trombone goes, blah, 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 and you say, we'll help you find coverage options to fit your budget. Then we just all do finger snaps while a choir goes, savings coming at ya, savings coming at ya. Yes? No? Maybe? Anyway, see your practice tonight. I got new lyrics for the rap break. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Price and coverage match limited by state law. Hello, everyone, everywhere. This is Bob Thibodeau with the Kingdom Crossroads Podcast, and you are listening to Life Transformation Radio with my good friend, Sean Douglas. Be sure to subscribe to his podcast so you will not miss any of the upcoming episodes. And be blessed in all that you do. Welcome to Life Transformation Radio. This show is all about life transformations and our journey from where we were to why we are doing what we are doing today. We will discuss the hiccups, the roller coasters, and the blood, sweat, and tears that has been poured out while discovering our purpose. It is all about our transformation. Here is your host, Sean Douglas. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Life Transformation Radio. I am your host, Master Resilience Implementer, TEDx speaker, business positioning strategist, and author, Sean Douglas. This show is currently heard in over 66 countries, such as the United States, Brazil, Canada, Mexico, Sweden, Switzerland, Australia, New Zealand. So I want to thank you to those who are listening from around the world. Life Transformation Radio is all about our transformation. Here is where we tell the stories of why we're doing what we're doing. We highlight that transformational moment that has changed our lives and how we use this to then transform others and elevate their lives as well. You can listen to us live right here on the Blog Talk Radio Network at 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time, 2.30 Pacific. You can join our Facebook community, Life Transformation Radio Community. Join us in our Facebook group. I ask that you subscribe, rate, and review the show everywhere that you listen to podcasts, notably on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, TuneIn, Player FM, Radio Public, Overcast, CastBox, or the Google Play Music app, or right here on Blog Talk Radio. Wherever you listen to podcasts, please subscribe to the show, and please leave a rating and review. On my show, I have other entrepreneurs, speakers, business owners, coaches, podcasters, authors, amazing people who are impacting the world around them. My friend today does exactly that. If you have any questions for any of the guests, this is a live show at 657-383-1109. Again, the number is 657-383-1109. So please help me welcome my friend, Jonathan Tramp. What's up, buddy? Hey, Sean. Love you. I'm so happy to be here with you. Man, I am so pumped to have you in the beginning of January because this talk of self-love is precisely, perfectly placed in the first to second week, about the second week, first eight days, right? Because all the New Year's resolutions are starting to wear off. People are starting to go back to their own ways, right? Yeah, they're like already they're just wearing like, It's crazy. Everyone's right, already right? copying them. Yes, this is, and I don't know if it was the universe. I'm sure it was. It was divine intervention. I don't know what it was. But months ago, you know, within a month or two ago, you know, I sent out the Kelly link and said, hey, man, go ahead and, you know, schedule yourself. Let's do this. And it just so happens that it's right around the time in the first 10 days that everybody just starts going back to what they normally do. And they forget yeah. their the old resolution. Habit, the old rhythm. Absolutely, absolutely. So we're going to have a great show, man. I cannot wait to dive in. So you ready to do this? I'm ready. Let's do it. So this episode is called Self-Love Revolution with my friend, Jonathan Trent. And you're, that's how you pronounce it, right? John, Trent, Trone? Trowen, Trowen. Tron, I always but messed I'm, it up. We've known each other for a while. Well. I always mess it up. Anyway. <laughs> hey, don't worry. I'm, I, so, you're, so you're easy because you have two first names. So, <laughs> I 
I've never been told that before. <laughs> Perfect. Oh, man. So Jonathan is a life mastery coach and creator of Self-Love Revolution. He is also the co-founder of Austin Yoga Tree in Austin, Texas, and the Life Mastery Collective. He serves on the board of directors for Perfectly Here. His mission, to help people find the joy inside of themselves. Jonathan spent 20 plus years in the music and entertainment business. He was living the life of his dreams, meeting the biggest stars in the world, except he wasn't very happy. He couldn't figure out why. Following a surgery that came with complications, he began his yoga practice to rehabilitate himself. He quickly discovered that while yoga had a dramatic effect on his body and physical well-being, it had an even more dramatic effect on his mind and mental well-being. While yoga opened the door to a new way of living, there was still more research to be done. Jonathan began studying people, how people lived, what they did, why they did what they did, and what they really wanted from life and how they defined success. His studies brought him to one conclusion. Most of us are mean to ourselves, and all we really want is to be loved. We think we are not enough, and we believe if we work hard enough, we will be enough, and then we can be happy and be loved. He also discovered that when we seek love from outside of us, it is fleeting. The only lasting love comes from inside of us. Since we haven't been taught to love ourselves, this creates a problem for us as individuals and as a society. Once he made this discovery, he started practicing self-love on himself. It was difficult at first, but he continued to practice and then began teaching and sharing with others. Jonathan created the self-love revolution specifically to share the methodology he created after 15 years of research and practice. Now, there's some websites down here. You can go to www.selfloverevolution.com, selfloverevolution.com, and then go to www.troen, that's his last name, Troen, www.troen.net and I'll make sure that all of the show notes have the correct uh, links and everything is ready to go so that you click and go right to see what Jonathan's up to. So, man, the first question that I have to ask, man, is what is your why? What is, what is the reason why you do what you do? The reason why assholes except we're assholes to ourselves. Mm. I get that there are people okay. that, that, that are assholes to other people. Don't, don't get me wrong. And I don't mean to, to, to drop, drop, you know, those words on your show. But, you know, I, I didn't realize it for myself at the beginning. I mean, like, you know, you, you read that bio, and, and it made me, I wrote it a, a while ago. And, you know, it made me think back. Yeah, I, I was having the dream life. I was interviewing the biggest stars. It, and and it was awesome. And I don't say that yep. to Brad. I, I say it for the opposite reason, that I was miserable. And I couldn't figure out why. And when I finally discovered it, and, and it took me a while, because what I would do at first is, you know, so I'd read some Tony Robbins and watch some videos, and then I'd be all pumped up, and I'd have, I, I would have great success, what, what the world defines as success. I mean, I lived in Santa Monica in California. I lived two blocks from the beach. I had what everyone would call the picture-perfect life. So I'd read Tony Robbins, things would be awesome. And then I'd fall down again, I'd just be miserable. And, you know, so then I'd watch The Secret, and I'd, I'd go, oh, I just have to say good things. Okay, so then I'd say good things to myself, and things would be good. And then yep. when I'd hit the bottom again, I'd be like, what the hell is wrong with me? I wouldn't even think, what, what's, what's wrong with the process? I was going, what's wrong with me? Why am I so messed up? Why do I have everything I ever tried to get, I ever wanted to do? You know, I wanted to, to see rock concerts. I, 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 I've seen everybody want to see and more that I can't even remember. I wanted to interview people. I've interviewed everyone that I truly ever dreamed of interviewing. I interviewed them, plus many more. And I couldn't figure out why. And... And then I was I was reading this book. It was it was some years ago now. You ever read the Four Agreements? What was Agreements? the book? The Four Agreements. Have you ever read that? Oh yeah, yeah. I've heard of that. I've heard. Of, I haven't read it, but I've I heard it's really good. Awesome book. You can read it during halftime of the football game. It's a quick read. <laughs> and 
I was reading it for about the third time because it's one of those books you read over and over. And all of a sudden, I just I, my my arm went to a piece of a, a pen and a piece of paper, and I wrote down unconditional self love. And I'll be honest with you, I had no idea what the hell that meant. <laughs> no idea. Wow. And it, it just like came out and onto a paper. I'm like, what the hell is that? And and I kind of just even left it there. I, I didn't know what to do with that piece of information at the time. Um, but then you know how if you if you buy a car. Uh, and you buy, like, so say uh-huh. you buy a Toyota, then you see every Toyota that's on the road. Oh, you know, you every, yeah. Right? So all of a sudden, these these little hints of self-love started popping into my life. And, and, and I realized I, I didn't create this thing called self-love, right? There are many teachers before me. Um, but through that whole process, I discovered that I was actually what I said to begin. I was an asshole just an asshole to myself, not to anyone else. People would have told you I was the nicest guy in the world. Really, they would have. But man, inside those voices in my head, they took a beating on me. So so my why is I want people just to stop beating themselves up. That's that's my first, that's the little one, right? Just stop yeah. beating yourself up. And then if we can take it a step further, hey, you know all that joy you're looking for? It's not coming from the outside world. It's not coming from that person next to you. It's not coming from, from your job, because I have the job. It's not coming from your cool new car, because I, I got that too. It's not coming from, um, you know, where, where you're living, because I, I moved everywhere. Finally, I got to where I wanted to be, by the beach, Santa Monica. It didn't come from that. It's not coming from any of that. And you've got to find out how to get it from inside of you. And when huh. you do that, it changes everything around. Life is good. Yeah, I've heard it said that, you know, like in my TEDx talk, I, I talked about how you can't fix what's going on around you until you fix what's going on inside you. So, you know, and so, and, and, it, and it just, and I believe that, you know, I, yeah. I just, I absolutely believe that because there's so much stuff that happens to us and you need to be able to navigate it, accept it, process it and, and like keep going, you know, but people get stuck and they plant their mailbox and like, well, this is all I can do. This is it. This is my lot in life. I'm never going to, you know, overcome whatever. So what I've, what I've, what I've learned is that until you fix what's going on inside you, right. Rewire your mind or body or whatever you need to do. It's just always going to be like that. And, and the amazing thing is, is that, and, and you know, I didn't believe this at first because it doesn't really make logical sense, but it yeah. is how it works. When you change all that stuff inside of you, right, what, what we really want is other two people to be kind to us, right? So we put on all these masks so that other people will like us, right? Well, how, what, yeah. how do I have to, ask to get that person to like me? But the fascinating thing is, is that when you rip off all those masks and you just start loving yourself, all those people you want to admire you, well, they just automatically start liking you because people are attracted to that different kind of energy. Right? We've all seen that person yeah. walk into the party, doesn't say a word, not the loud one that, that screams, and that guy's fun too, don't get me wrong, but the person that just uh, walks in very calmly, quietly, and takes up the whole room, and everyone turns their head and they want to know, who, who is she? Who is he? Yeah. What's going on there? It's because there's, there's this radiance that happens from them that people want to be a part of. And that's what happens when you begin to love yourself. You want the job? People hire you. You want the money? Money finds you. You, you want the yeah. relationship? Well, people are way more attracted to happy people than miserable people. Believe me, I've discovered that one. Um, yeah. So change yourself and the world around you changes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And it seems like, you know, I literally just had a conversation with my 15-year-old. You know, I get home from work today, you know, so in the military. So I get off duty, come home, and he's in the driveway, and I pull into the driveway, and, you know, he gets out of the way because he's, like, behind one of the cars. So I just pull in, you know, and I'm like, oh, there he is. Like, he just kind of popped up, you know, and he's on a skateboard. And I was like, hey, ma'am, what did I tell you the next time? Because I've yelled at him many, many times. I was like, dude, you have to wear a helmet on the skateboard. Have to. Like, you must. 
So our daughter broke her collarbone a year ago, and she had a helmet on. The doctor said, man, the helmet, because the handlebars came up and hit her in the face. He's like, it, it, if she would have fell on her head because the bike fell on her and broke her collarbone, it's like she would have had, like, serious damage. So since that day, it's like, okay, I got to wear helmets. It's like, oh, my God, I got to wear helmets. So I'm like, dude, you need to wear a helmet. I've told you many times, you need to wear a helmet. So what I tell you the next time was going to happen if you didn't wear a helmet? He's like, you're going to throw my skateboard away? And I was like, so I'm going to give you an ultimatum. Either go get a helmet right now, put it on your head, or you know what to do. He threw the skateboard away. I was like, what the hell are you doing? My friends will laugh at me. My friends will laugh at me. He loves skateboarding. Loves everything having to do with skateboards and boarding and the sport of skateboarding and everything. He's more worried about what his friends will say to him because they don't wear helmets. And helmets are for newbies. He's more worried about what his friends will say than his own skull. His own Wow. That's what I dealt with And that's what's just crazy. And, And the truth is, the problem is, that's what we teach in school. In schools today, we teach competition. There are winners and losers. If you're not the winner, you're the loser. And you, you got to sit know. in. I mean, yeah, I don't know, man. That, that becomes like a participation trophy conversation. Like, because, there's got to be a winner and a loser. Like, I'm totally cool with that. But, like, not tell them, ha-ha, you suck. You know, like, but, like, in a loving way, like, okay, let's work on this. Let's be better. Let's always room for growth. Like, if you, if you talk about the growth – because you didn't win, so let's grow and try to win next time or whatever. But instead of people going, well, my son didn't win, so he's left out, so let's give him a participation trophy. Like, I don't think it's no, dangerous. Particip- I think it's dangerous territory. Well, participation trophies suck. Because, again, <laughs> a participation trophy is acknowledgement from the outside. It's, it, it's you, you need someone from the outside of you to tell you you're good enough. I'm with you there. Mm. Particip- participation trophies, get rid of them. Because you're okay. good enough with or without a trophy. Right. 100% agree. You're, so what were it you It comes saying? from – well, we're trained that if you're not a winner, then you are a loser. And not everyone can be the number one. Right. But does that mean two through 1,500,000, whatever it is, they all suck, they're all losers? Or, mm. or because I'm number 505, or maybe I'm 1 million and five, or 1 billion and five – I'm still okay. I'm still good. I have stuff to contribute to this world that no one else can contribute. No one else can do this. Even though I didn't make number one, I didn't get the award. Because the teaching is either you're number one or you're nothing. I'm okay with having a number one. Right. I'm not okay with everyone else being nothing. Or, well, like you said, we're going to give you a trophy to, to, to just to, to make you feel like you're a winner because right. I say you're good enough. No one else can tell me I'm good enough. Right. Yeah, uh, you know, you know, I, I think, I think in this bio, it has, it has three letters. You know, people put letters after the name, you know, MSL, being for social workers, PhD for this and that. Oh yeah. So I, CPA, put yep. I put CLO. It stands okay. for chief life officer. Chief what? And you know what universe chief life officer. I am the chief oh, like officer that. of my life. And you know who wow. gave me that? I know what school I had to go to, what, what, what great professors or what, what great um, people gave me that. No one. I said, screw this. I have to claim this. When I do workshops with people, you know how you do a workshop, you get the certificate at the end? Yep, yep, yep. So I, I give everyone a certificate, but I refuse to sign it. I make them huh. sign it. If they're ready to take the reins of their life, then they wow. sign it. They give themselves approval. Oh, I, I love that. I can't say you're oh, good. At, you've God. done the work and you're good enough. You give yourself approval. You know, you're not ready today. Keep the certificate. Throw it out. Your choice. Throw your skateboard out. Write whatever you want. But I cannot give you approval that you're good enough or you're worthy or, 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 or that you've mastered self-love or some of the other courses that I teach. You claim it yourself that's huge wow man wow make them sign it when you're ready 
that's some internal conflict. Some like wow, that's yeah. Because I'm taking that with me waiting. to the grave, man. That's huge. Please do. We wait, and and I have so many people. You know, they want to do something, but they need to get more education. And I'm not saying education bad. I I am pro education. I am pro training. I am pro learning. I'm pro reading. I'm saying learn from the people who've done it before you. I have. I'll even tell people nothing I tell you is my own. It all comes mm-hmm. from great teachers from from past years and past millennia, and it just gets transported through me and my words and my attitude, my way, and that that they need someone else to say, you can now do this, mm-hmm. and you don't. You can do it on your own, but you do need to change the way you think. You do need to have the confidence to do it. Right now, confidence comes from the outside. Someone else tells you you're good enough, like we're talking about. So with self-love, finding that joy inside of yourself, you build it up from the inside. Then you can create mm-hmm. anything you want. I love that. I, before I forget, I wanted to make a point about what you were saying earlier about, you know, number ones, number 500, number whatever. Now, this is just me and my thinking right now while you're saying that. So in the Olympics, you get gold medal, silver medal, you know, all that stuff, right, in the Olympics. For me, I wouldn't even care if I got first, second, third, like whatever. Like, I would just be happy that I'm in the Olympics. And maybe that's just a gratitude skill, like I've mastered the gratitude skill. Maybe that's like I'm just so thankful to be in the moment that winning like I've never chased well ever since you know I've done gratitude and all that, like I haven't chased that I don't I don't aspire to be the best speaker in the world I don't want to be number one speaker in the world I don't want to be you know whatever you know I don't want to be the the best at this and the best I never want to be the smartest guy in the room like that would suck you know like I wouldn't grow I wouldn't like that's what I love the most is growing it, and learning and you know, whatever. Yeah. So you have nothing I just, to learn. I, don't know. The I love the journey. Yes. Yeah. I love the, I, 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 that's what I love. So when you were talking about like number one and this, that it was like, I just, yeah, I wouldn't mind if I was number 500. If I was like, it gives me something to chase. It gives me something to do. It gives me something to aspire to. And I could, I could go the whole rest of my life trying to aspire to what people think. You know what I mean? But, but some things, some things I've learned, and some things I've heard, and some things that I've experienced is that is that we tend to live in the reality of what other people think about us, or we want to yes. live in the reality of what other people think about us. Just like my son, he says, "Well, I, I I don't want my friends to make fun of me. I don't want my friends to make fun of me." And his friends are going to make fun of him because he has a a, a helmet on his head. Like, really? So you're going to give up something that you love? Because you value someone else's opinion more than your own. It's crazy. This is why, uh, this is the way we live. And this is why there's, there's so much anxiety and depression, especially with younger people right now. The, pur- the purpose of life has become to impress other people and to fit in with them. 100%. And, it, and it's making a lot of miserable people. Right, and our yes. mental health, everything's about mental health. And, and, and we don't, get me wrong, I'm not belittling that. We have to take care of it. We just have to take care of it a different way by, by teaching people the tools. And you hit it on the head, right? One of the tools we don't teach people, you hit it, gratitude. I wasn't taught a, a daily practice of gratitude when I was younger. I was taught how to brush my teeth every day when I was younger. But I wasn't taught gratitude. I wasn't taught what well, you, you also alluded to. I used a different word than I used, but you said being in that, you know, and I talked right. about acceptance, right, which is the same thing, yes. acceptance of just moments, just the way it is. Um, I wasn't taught how to, how to accept the present moment, especially if I was angry, sad. Right? These are things that people think they're not supposed to feel. Don't cry. You haven't been told don't cry? Yes. I, I sometimes say that to my kid. Well, okay. Well, sometimes, okay. So, my four-year-old will stub her toe, or she'll, you know, whatever. Something will happen, and then she'll start to cry. I'm like, "What are you crying about? What's the matter?" Oh, I I scratched myself or something. I'm like, "You're okay. You're okay. Don't cry. You're okay." You know. So it's like I'm 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 I don't know. I mean, I don't know why I do it because you don't need to cry about everything, or you don't. 
Uh, maybe that's what I was taught. Maybe you just you, you suck it up. Right? I mean, that's what I, I was told a lot of my life. Ta- just suck it up. Yeah, I think that's what we've been taught. And then we bury it. And while uh, and that's fine with a stubbed toe, the problem is that then when we get that lesson, we use it the same for, for the broken heart. Suck it up. Uh, yeah. For the family member that dies. Suck it up. Keep yeah. going, right? Uh, Ask friends that their parents die and they don't grieve. Like, no, get them back to work. And they ignore it. So mm. you can start it with the stubbed toe and say, you know what? I've stubbed my toe before. Cause I, I have a four-year-old. You know, I've stubbed my toe before. I know that hurts a lot. I get it. Yeah. I understand you. I understand your pain. You're okay. Right? I'm with you. You're okay. And you know what? If you need to cry, cry. I'm here for you. I love you unconditionally. You want to cry? Cry. I'm here for you. It hurts when you stub your toe. When you're done, I'm still going to be here for you. And then it teaches them that what they're feeling is not wrong because we all feel stuff we don't want to feel, whether it's a stubbed toe, a broken arm, or we didn't get the job, broken heart. Uh, I mean, bad things happen in life. I, you know, bad maybe is, is not the right word, but things we don't like, we would rather not happen, happen in life. There's no way around that one. So now it's just, how do we face it? Oh, I'm in pain right now, and I'm not going to fight the pain. I'm just not going to let it be there. Because when you let the pain be there, it subsides. It goes away. Next time, I, I, don't, know, I don't know if you're like, like, like me. Next time you're in traffic, I want you to try this. Or at a red light. You ever in traffic and go, man, i got to get there, and you start squeezing the steering wheel? <laughs> do that? Every day. Every day. Yeah. <laughs> so Every this, day. So this is what I want you to do. I don't want you to do the, okay, I'm going to stop squeezing the steering wheel. Don't do that. I just want you to notice what it feels like to squeeze the steering wheel. What it feels oh, like yeah. on your hand, what it feels like in your shoulders. And yeah, I already know what that feels like. I'm very aware. Do it when it's happening. Because when you do it and you notice it, you will notice that you instantly begin to release the steering wheel. Yeah, Because true. when you accept the pain or discomfort, yeah. that might not be pain, but discomfort, unpleasant feelings, unpleasant sensations as I call them, if you just let them be there, they will pass through on their own. Some more quickly than others. You know, the steering wheel is up toe, they'll pass pretty quickly. The grieving, that might take a little longer, you know, a few days, week, months, right. but, but let it so that it doesn't, otherwise it takes a hole inside of you, and we all know that they come up. You either explode at someone for no reason or, or yep. you get sick, right? One of these autoimmune diseases. So, so yeah, be it for pain. Nothing wrong with pain. Feel it. What, what does that stuff to feel like? Where mm-hmm. on your toe does it hurt? Point to the actual point and analyze yeah. the pain instead of hiding from it. You're, I, I tell people, especially the emotional pain, your answer is inside of the pain. Don't go around it. Don't go above it. Don't even go through it. Go to it. And your answer is in the middle of it. Nice. No, I really like that. And you make me, uh, make me want to be a better parent, man kind of felt uh, like I was kind of failing my kids a little bit when you're like, no, 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 just like accept it. it, it because it makes so much sense. It's not like you're, you know, it's not like you're talking about like, what do they call it? Like the millennial snowflake, like the, you know, crybaby people, like whatever, like, you know, when Trump got elected, you know, and all these people like crying, you know, like all that, like, I don't, I don't think it's like that. I think you're really like being in tune with your feelings and why you feel the way that you do. Because I firmly believe that thoughts, feelings, and beliefs drive all reactions, right? Yeah. Thoughts, feelings, beliefs drive all reactions. So I guess I and really kind of feeling, but yeah, yeah. And it, and I think I've just kind of taken it to that level where I'm like, don't cry. You're fine. It's fine. Suck it up. Rub some dirt on it. It's fine. Right, and never really taught my children how to deal with feelings. Now that I look back on it, I'm like, "Mm." because the way you explained it, I'm like, "Crap, yeah, I'm not doing that." And it kind of felt like I should. Like inside, I kind of felt like I should. Well, and and I wasn't taught it either. We all got to learn this. It's not a blame thing. There's no failure here. It's like we have to now relearn something. 
and you are exactly right what 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 you said. I kind of call it wallowing, wallowing in pain. There's a difference between yeah. wallowing in pain. Oh, woe is me, I stub my toe, versus right. I stub my toe and there's this throbbing nature to it. And it and it, it, it starts at the top corner and it emanates through the whole toe. That's observing the sensation. That's being with with the feeling. And you can do that with emotional feelings as well. You know, I feel this this churning in my stomach versus, oh, I just have a stomach ache. I want to get rid of this. You know, get me a beer. Yeah. It, it's not wallowing. You're right. And some people do that. Yeah. It's really yeah. being with it and connecting to it. Right. I love that. Love that. So what is the transformation that has happened in your life that's taken you on the path to what you're doing today? The transformation. Well, I mean, I, I, I say I spent 20 years in the entertainment biz, um, you know, both music and then television. And I was climbing the ladder that I thought I was supposed to be climbing, right? The more senior job title that someone else gave me, by the way, the more money. And, you know, it, it's, it's interesting. And, and part of this, I only figured out in retrospect. I remember the day I started out in radio, and I remember the day I wanted to be in, in radio. I, I was not the cool kid at school, let's just say. And I remember a bad day in junior high. Uh, and I don't know what happened, but I remember it wasn't a good day, and I went home, and I turned on the radio, and the DJ played a song, and the DJ said something, and all of a sudden I had a smile on my face. And I said wow. to myself, that's what I want to do. I want to put a smile on people's faces. And when I started out in, in the entertainment world, I, I, I believe I was doing that. But then I got caught up in, in the whole business of it, and not that it's bad. There are great things in the entertainment world, and I didn't know how to navigate it then because I was looking to please other people. Um, so, you know, I started taking jobs I didn't really want. I was working on shows that I, I didn't really think were great for, for humanity, but, you know, they were paying my rent, and so why not? And they complimented my work, and that felt good, and it felt good to go on dates. I was single at the time, and, and you know, what do you do? Oh, I'm producing these TV shows, and they're like, oh, no, wow, that's cool. And so I feel good for those moments. Of course, you know, I go home afterwards and feel like crap. Um, yep. And yeah, I've been there. What I, what I do now is I'm back. I'm in a whole different world, but I'm back to the original value. What do I do now? I put a smile on people's faces. I've adapted a little bit because I, I, I seek to have them do it for themselves, like you said at the beginning, find the joy inside of yourself. So more than me doing something to create the smile, I, I, I seek to give guidance for, for where can you find it inside of you so that you can have everything you really want in life, but then enjoy it. Because you can be rich and enjoy it, don't get me wrong. Um, but yeah. we know rich people, some are miserable, and we know some are happy. And we know poor people, are, some are miserable and some are happy. So it has nothing yep. to do with the money. Be wealthy. But if you get wealthy while you're miserable the whole time, chances are when you're wealthy, you're going to be miserable. And we have lots That's of true. fallen stars who've taken their own lives to prove that to us. Yes. But if you, yes. If you, you, you use these tools, find that joy inside of yourself, right? get that smile on your face. Then when you reach those goals, and the money's coming in, you have your house, you're actually going to enjoy it. You don't need the next thing. You don't need your new iPhone every year. Yeah, when it starts getting slow, get yourself a new, a new iPhone. But you won't need to wait online for, you know, overnight to get it right away because most of that's done to show everyone else that you have the first iPhone. And I know there's some people that just love technology so much and just want to play with everything. But there are a lot of people that, that need it to, like you said, like the skateboard and the helmet to show others what we got. And if you live that way, yep. when you got it all, you're still going to be beating yourself up. You will never have enough, ever. And when you love yourself, when you transform that, you always have enough. And then it keeps coming in. So I, I, don't, I know I didn't really answer your question. What was that one moment? What was that Maybe one was, transformation yeah. moment? I would think it would be that accident, right? I mean, you get into yoga and it was like more and more and more, but – 
after talking I, I to you that, about your about your story, I'm not sure that's I'm not sure that is a transformational moment. I mean, yes, it changed your life, but I'm not sure that was the transformational moment. Maybe it was the moment where you learned self love, right? And maybe you learned a different way. I don't know. What, what would you well, say would moment, be a transformational the, moment? Here's a transformational moment. When I started learning these techniques of self love. I started incorporating it into my coaching, but I never said what it was. I never used the term self-love because I was afraid of what other people might think. So, you know, mm-hmm. I, I had, you know, get unstuck and, 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 you know, create your purpose and, you know, all those kind of things. Maximize this, 10x this, those kind of things. And then two years ago I said, I'm ripping the Band-Aid off. I'm going to tell people what I do. It's self-love. It's a self-love revolution. Stop calling, stop trying to do that, but pretend it's something else so that you fit into the lexicon of other people. And I got to be honest, that was terrifying for me to do, but I was practicing courage. People think they're courageous people and not courageous people. Not true. We're all afraid. Some people are afraid and take action and some people are afraid and don't take action. Taking action is practicing courage. I used to be really bad at practicing courage. I was afraid of what other people would think of me if I practiced courage, if I did it wrong. So what I did in that moment was I practiced courage and I labeled it self-love revolution. I shared it with, with my community here. You mentioned Austin Yoga Tree, so I, I have you know, I, I work with people around the world through, through um, you know, and they often find me online or through referrals, but, but I have an in-person yep. community here at Austin Yoga Tree. So I typed up the email, scared as all hell. What are people going to say? I announced the event, yep. and I had a packed room full of people at it who That's wanted awesome. to learn how to love themselves. And... Um, and then half those people signed up for for the class that, that I started teaching. And those lives, you know, I, you know, we have the testimonials. They were transformed. But the the transformation for me, and you know, if I had to look at, there were many. Yes, it, it was it was the surgery and and finding yoga, huge. Because none of this could have happened without that. Yeah, I spent sure. my life raging at punk rock shows. That was my life for decades, uh, and uh, I was fine with that. Really? You know, screw the world screw the government, screw you all. That was my life, banging into people wow. at the show. And so yoga began to teach me that there was a different way to live. So that was big. But the most recent big one when, when, was when I practiced cards, claimed the title, and said what I'm doing and, and used what I was afraid people think were, like you said, snowflake words. But I realized, yeah. no, man, this is the most courageous thing you can do. You want an act of resistance? You want to rebel against the world? Then you practice self-love because there's no bigger act of resistance that goes against what you're being taught to do. You're being taught to work hard so that one day you might be successful, so that one day you'll be happy. And people do this for decades. They wind up at 50 and they have a midlife crisis. Now it's a quarter-life crisis. It's actually a term now, the quarter-life crisis. Really? And Yeah. Because oh, we work geez. hard. And then some of us, see some don't get successful and some do. Get the money, get all you want. And you go, okay, well, now I'm supposed to be happy, right? I did everything they told. They told me to do. Now I'm not happy. What's wrong with me? So yeah. I created a new equation. Be happy, which is feeling loved, right? Don't you, don't, aren't you happy when you feel loved? 100%. Yeah. So it doesn't always come from the outside. We can't control that, but we can control from the inside. So be happy, which I define as loving yourself. When you have that, you are successful because that's all you ever wanted in the first place. And then, because people think it's a cop-out, now you're not going to do the work. No, now you work hard because when you're happy, it is so easy to just put yourself out there and work hard because you're not worried about what other people are going to say. So you work 10 times harder than the other guy just because you're actually enjoying it. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. Love that. So how is it that you elevate the lives around you? You, know, you talked about the yoga. You talked about 
you know, the self love revolution that you've created and everything. So, so without getting into like processes and stuff, you know, what are your daily actions? What, what type of things do you do to elevate the world around you and to tell them about the self love revolution? Well, so the first thing I have to do is elevate myself. So, so I won't get deep in, into process due to time reasons, though I'm certainly happy to. I'll talk about it all day long. But it, <laughs> it, it's the four pillars, acceptance, what we spoke about before, yep. accepting the present moment. I have to yep. do that because, look, life every day isn't exactly how I want it to be, but I accept it. Um, uh, practice gratitude. Practice forgiveness. And, and, and the problem with, with forgiveness is, is that, that most people don't practice it completely. It's not just forgiving others. Um, it's forgiving yourself. So if you don't forgive yourself uh, for your past mistakes, what you wish you would have done differently then, right? You ever go, man, if I only done that, you know, 10 years ago, if I would have made that different decision, life would be different. Have you ever had that conversation with yourself? Oh, yeah. You know, that's a dangerous yeah. conversation to have. Taking me yeah, to some well, really so dark I, places, that conversation. You know, I messed right. this so, up. I did this. It's so, kind of a self-blame thing. So, that's it, self-blame. And oh, I was at this workshop over the weekend. I'm stealing this. The guy's name is Gabriel Halpern. His words, bliss is blameless. You got to get rid of blame if you want to experience bliss. And that's a whole practice with getting, getting uh, dealing with blame. Um, but, yeah, so there's, it's forgiveness. So it's acceptance, gratitude, forgiveness, and then self-kindness. So I look in the mirror. When I look in the mirror, what I used to do when I looked in the mirror, I said to myself, man, you don't look very good. You're ugly. You don't look as good as that guy. You know, you know Christian Bale, you know, all this kind of stuff. Now I look at myself in the mirror and go, hey, Jonathan, you look awesome. New gray hair? Hey, gray hair. Welcome to the family. No problem. You can be here. New wrinkle on my face? Welcome. Welcome. Nice to see you there. So the first thing I do to help elevate other people is elevate myself. Because when I'm in this state, people want to be around me. It's pretty cool. People actually want to be around me. Uh, but it's not because I'm fitting <laughs> awesome. into them. It's because I'm elevating myself. And people want to be around people like that. And then right. once they're around me, what do I do? We have conversations like this, just like you and I are having. And then the yeah. aha moment goes off to them. Wow. You I mean, if I just do this, if I feel the pain, I can be okay. If I stop fighting it, or, I mean, if I, just, if I just think of three things every day that I'm grateful for, my life will change? Yes, it's true. You brush your teeth every day. I mean, Matt, we've been taught to brush our teeth every day, right? And, and right. Also, you know, so we have good quality teeth. We go to the dentist twice a year. If you stop brushing your teeth today, guess what's going to happen? They're going to rot. Yep. So, it's like Zig Ziglar said about motivation and taking baths. I remember reading a quote where he says, you take baths every day? Yes. Well, that's like motivation. You got to do it every day. <laughs> so Yeah. So that's what I could, So that's the same for, for what I would say for self-love. You can't practice gratitude. You can't even do all four of them. And do, I'm going to do this for a year, and then I'm going to be okay. Because a lot of people think they'll master it, then they'll be okay, and then they can stop working so hard. Right. No. You brush your teeth every day. Now, it doesn't take hours and hours. I do some of this while I brush my teeth. Two minutes a day, morning and night. I hope you're brushing your teeth for two minutes a day. If not, up your game. And I sit there, look in the mirror. And I practice gratitude. I practice forgiveness for everything that's happened that day, things that people have done to me that I didn't like. I forgive them. Things that I did to other people that I could have done better, I ask for forgiveness. And then... I forgive myself for all the things I messed up. You know what I've done? Tell me. Kind of like that is affirmations. Yeah. It's similar. The the thing about affirmations is you've got to turn them into a feeling. If you don't feel your affirmations, they may not work. For some people, affirmations work great because they immediately get the feeling. Other people, the thing is, I was one of those people. Watch The Secret. Oh, I can just say things, and I'm going to be awesome. And, and it had an effect, but it wasn't lasting. I dropped down again. And, and I discovered later, um, and I think it was when I was reading, it, 
I was reading the book Think and Grow Rich. Have you read that one? Oh, yeah. So, you know, people think it's about money. It has nothing to do with money. Because uh, he talks, he uses the word emotionalize. The thought, I think he says, emotionalize it. And it's about having the sensation. You have to turn your affirmation into a feeling in your body. The feeling in your body is what reprograms your subconscious. And when you reprogram your subconscious into those positive beliefs, then your life begins to change. If, it, if it's just 100%. in the conscious mind, it, it won't work. But, yeah, if you can use like these affirmations it. and reprogram your subconscious, done. And, yes, that's what's it. When I look at myself in the mirror, and, and I, let me be clear, when I started this, I couldn't do it. I remember the first time. Uh, when I first moved to Austin, I was still living in an apartment because we had just moved here, uh, and I had my wife before we had our kid, and uh, I, I looked in the mirror, and I, I looked it into my eyes, and I said, as I looked away from myself. I was trying to say I love you, and it came out. I couldn't look at myself, and I, could, I, I couldn't say it. So I, I just continued practicing and practicing and practicing and practicing and being kind to myself in other ways, right? Thank you, legs. You can walk, right? You know, you spoke about the stubbed toe before. Do you find it interesting the only time we, we talk about our toes is when we bitch about them because we stubbed them and it hurts? Yeah. And then we can't walk? Have you ever said thank you, big toe, for supporting me? Because I know it's a bitch to walk when you're not functioning well. Right. So I know it sounds stupid, but yeah, I started thanking my big toe, my pinky toe, my legs. And now I can say, hey, Jonathan, I love you. You're awesome. You did a good job today. It doesn't mean I didn't do any mistakes. I make mistakes every day. But at the end of the day, I can still look at myself and say, you helped someone, you did a good job, you helped yourself, and you're awesome. Yeah. And yeah. that's what gives you a good life. I love it. I love it. One of the things that I struggled with when doing affirmations, like, this is silly. I'm talking to myself. This is silly. And, and as I, it, <laughs> I love that one. And, and as I did it more, I felt good. You know, what, I, mean, look, I mean, in the simplest form, what do we always do? You got this. Come on, man. You got this. And you're like, even if you don't believe in, like, a God or whatever, like, you're just sitting there like, come on, please. Come on, come on, and you're like pleading with the universe. Really, is what you're doing. Like, come on, please. Yes. Like even at like a, a, ba- a basketball game, a sporting event, horse race. You know, there's somebody like, come on, come on, please. You know, like you're like. Yeah. So, I started feeling really weird. Like I don't think you're supposed to feel this way. This is weird. I don't like this feeling. I feel awkward. You know. And then I didn't do it for a couple of days, and then I went back to it was like. Like, you're awesome. You got this. So I wake up every day, go, today is going to be a great day. Today is going to be a great day because I get the opportunity to, you know, whatever. So I stopped doing things like, you rock, you're awesome, you know, you love you, you know, that type of stuff. Like, in the mirror, like, talking to me like as if I'm somebody else. Uh-huh. I just started speaking things into existence. You know, I'm yeah. grateful that I get to do this. I'm grateful that... You know, yes, and, and then you said that's how about forgiveness. That's that was huge for me because I didn't want to hold the grudge, but at the same time, I'm like, mm, this person really, ooh, that was so bad what they did to me. Like they need to pay. You know, like you need to be miserable for the rest of your life. And you know what? That person that that, that did that to you obviously doesn't care about you. That's so right. you holding a grudge against them assures that they don't care about you <laughs> because they're not going home at night going, man, I can't believe he has a grudge against me. Oh man, my life sucks now. No, they don't care. The, the they're hurt the is having a good time while, while you're right? talking about it. They don't, right? They don't care. So yeah, we got to stop living the reality of what other people think about us and living in that reality all the time. Like that's how they think about me. So that's who I am. And, and stop believing all of the noise that we get told all the time, you're not good enough, you're not this, you're not that. Find your zone of genius. That's what I tell people. Find your zone of genius. Find yes, what love, lights oh, you up. That. Find what lights you up. And do that. Mm-hmm. Yep. And do that. 
That's it. And and here's what's funny. So, you know, you say it's weird talking to Eric's beginning. You know, it was weird talking to myself. And the thing is, we are all already talking to ourselves. We talk to ourselves all day long. Before I actively started talking to myself, I was still talking to myself. They just weren't pretty conversations. They were, you suck, why'd you mess that up? You should have done that conversation differently. You know, that didn't go well. Even even if great things, I could have done great things throughout the day, right? Every day we do good things that that we're happy with and things that could be different. Every day. It might be a different percentage one day or the other, but every day is pretty much a mix of I got the results I wanted and some things didn't go exactly how I wanted. So I used to just have random conversations with myself all day long, focus on everything that went wrong. Now, I don't disregard, I don't say that stuff didn't happen, but I actively have the conversation with myself about things that went right. So people that think it's weird to talk to themselves, hey, guess what? You're already talking to yourself. Tell me I'm wrong. You're talking to yourself all day long. Yeah, yeah. We just suggest you change the conversation. Change the change the topic of discussion or change the words that you tell yourself yeah. or the story you tell yourself. Yeah, change the story you tell yourself. Yep. I love that, man. I love that. So let's do a shameless plug. You can plug Friends Quotes websites, Facebook, whatever it is that you want the audience to know about you. This is your moment. Shameless plug. Go. Start off at www.selfloverevolution.com. Go there. Click the button that says join the revolution. Even if you don't know how to fight it yet, even if you don't know how to love it yet, join it. There is a free master class up there. Take it. It gives you all the tools that, that you need to start practicing. Yes, I am very transparent. There will be an offer there for you to go into a deeper immersion with a group of people with help from me, personal help from me. You don't need to do it. All the tools are there in, in the free master class. If you really want to deep dive in secure practice, yes, join the class. But whatever you do, at least just join the revolution so that you can start changing your story and changing your conversation with yourself. Uh, you know, if you want personal coaching from me, that's fine too. You can find a link on selfloverevolution.com or go to, uh, I think you said the link before, www.troen.net. That's my name, Jonathan yep. Troen, last name. T R O E N dot net. Um, it's more some of the old. It's not fully updated with with all the self love work that I do. It's more like what we were talking about before the, the general coaching. But all this is in there. You want to master your life? We'd love to work with you. Go there. Shoot me an email. Give me a call. Um, I'm pretty easy to find. So join the love revolution. It. Join the self love revolution. Absolutely. Absolutely. We need to start treating ourselves better. We're, so, we're, we're destined for so much more. It's all it really is. Like on, on its base, it's just be kind to yourself. That's all. You want the other person to be nice to you. You want your friends to be nice to you. All I'm saying is treat yourself like you want your friend to treat you. Yeah. Why would you want your friend to treat you better than you're treating yourself? Just, just think to yourself for a moment. When you're in whatever situation, what would I want my friend to say to me right now or do right now? And then say or do that to yourself. That's it. We're just saying be kind to yourself. That's it. Yep. That's it. Awesome. Hey, man, I want to thank you for coming on the show. I was really looking forward to this. I think we went kind of deep on this, man. And I feel really good that what this is going to do is resonate with a lot of the people who may not feel like they're good enough. They may not feel like they have anything to give to the world because so much has been taken from them. That's what I'm feeling. Yeah. I, I hope so. And and I'm so grateful for you for, for highlighting self-love. Man, you're a rock star, what you're doing, what you're putting out there. Um, I just I just love watching you and, and everything you're doing. So I'm so grateful that you would take the time uh, for this and spreading self-love revolution. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. 
Absolutely. So give us a give us a takeaway. Give us give us an action. Give us one nugget of knowledge that will motivate, transcend, and inspire someone to take that action. Look in the mirror and say something kind to yourself. That's it. And then here's what I'll say, because when I first did that, it didn't feel well. It didn't feel good at all. It felt like crap. Notice what it feels like. And just be with that for a moment. And then try it again the next day. But you have to turn this into a daily practice. In order for work, it's got to be daily, like we spoke about before. But that's it. If you want to do one of the other ones, you know, I, I tell people, you can do any one of these and it'll change your life. Do them all together and, and complete transformation. But you want to start with gratitude, that's fine. One thing every day that you're truly thankful for. Right. Practice it. Practice gratitude. Practice oh, yeah. forgiveness. Just practice it. Don't succeed at it. You'll fail if you're going to succeed right out the door. You won't. Yep. Allow yourself yep. to fail. That's it. So look at yourself in the mirror. Say something. And if you can't do it in the mirror, that's fine. Walk up the stairs. One thing you want to do, walk up the stairs and say, thank you, knee, for working, even if it hurts. Just say, thank you, knee. I'm grateful that you, after all these years, can still carry me up the stairs. Huh. Begin there. My knees are so bad. <laughs> I need to be doing that because my knees, ooh, yeah. But they're still working for you, right? They are. And it's, I'm so and it's not your knee's fault that, 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 that you you uh you know kicked their ass so much that you did all that stuff you were doing that, that pushed them to the limit. It's not your knee's fault, right? We're, we're pissed off at our knees because they hurt. Your knees didn't ask you to do all the stuff you were doing. Right, it's true. So say, hey, knee. Yep. You know, I, I have issues with my neck. My neck's where my issues are. And, uh, and even though I've been doing this work for, for some time now, I I, it, I only started this, it was a few months ago, I realized that I was still pissed off in my neck. I was kind to huh. other parts of me, but that part of my neck, that worst part that, that's been the, the, the biggest issue, you know, tingling pain down my arm, still get, oh, man, why can't I get rid of it? And then a few months ago, I, I, I was not a mirror, I, but, so I just kind of looked at it inside of my head. I looked at my neck, so not really seeing it, and I apologized to it. I said, you know what? I'm sorry. I'm sorry I put you through this. And I'm telling you, I'm not saying I'm free of pain. I'm not saying that. But I am telling you the pain that I had at that moment immediately started easing up. Wow. It accepted my apology. And now I, I thank my neck for being there. Still holding my head up. I can look, I can drive, I can look up and down, I can look left, right, maybe not as far left as I'd like to, but I can, I can do it. So, yeah, just how can you begin being kind to yourself? That's it. What can you do today to be kind? I love it. That's a perfect way to end the show, man. I really want to thank you for spending time with us, for spending time with the Life Transformation Life Transformation Radio listeners and sharing the self-love revolution today, man. I really appreciate it. My pleasure. Love you, Sean. Yeah, love you too, buddy. We'll talk soon, man. We'll we'll meet. We'll have to hook up again, and then uh, when I'm in Austin, we'll do. Yeah. All right. So, Life Transformation Radio listeners, an amazing guest, impacting the world around him. He is on a mission. He's on a mission to help people find the joy inside of themselves. If you need more joy in your life, go to www.selfrevolution.com. Selfloverevolution.com. All the show notes have the links in there. Go ahead and click on those links, and it will take you right to the website. So as we close, I always say, live your brand. Find opportunities every day to live out the core values that you hold deep in your heart. And I call this living your brand. Until until next episode, live a great life. Skydiving. This is amazing.
Yeah, but you know what else is amazing? An iPhone 6S for just 49 bucks at Metro. Really? Imagine streaming all the way down with that amazing camera. I'm switching. That's smart. You know what else is smart? Parachutes. Woo! Switch to Metro and get an amazing iPhone 6S for only 49 bucks. Metro by T-Mobile. Phone offer requires port in of number not currently active on T-Mobile Network or active on Metro in past 90 days. See store for details and terms and conditions. Skydiving. This is amazing. Yeah, but you know what else is amazing? An iPhone 6S for just 49 bucks at Metro. Really? Imagine streaming all the way down with that amazing camera. I'm switching. That's smart. You know what else is smart? Parachutes. Woo! Switch to Metro and get an amazing iPhone 6S for only 49 bucks. Metro by T-Mobile. Phone offer requires port in of number not currently active on T-Mobile Network or active on Metro in past 90 days. See store for details and terms and conditions.